So there is a clip from the uh, Cybertoons YouTube channel, and as I said, he has made a name for himself animating the uh, the various YouTube celebrities that have emerged over the last couple of years. That was, of course, the Mystery Guitar Man. For my money, uh, that is equally as annoying as the real-life Mystery Guitar Man, so he's really, really nailed that je ne sais quoi of the MGM there. Your thoughts on that, Sean? I really enjoyed the stuff. I thought it was quite insightful, some really nice humour to it. And um, what's pretty interesting is he's all self-taught. He's all self-taught on Flash Animation. He mm. looks amazingly professional. And, you know, it's something that's a lot of fun. Indeed. I think the guy dropped out of college, didn't he? And just yes. started making these cartoons for fun. And then he was picked up by somebody. And uh, basically it's oh, become... Oh, that sounds a... a bit picked up by somebody. <laughs> Indeed, in a professional capacity. Oh, right, sure. Not in yes. uh, the capacity that you're more familiar with. I don't think it was the clip that made it go off air. But, well, we uh, don't know. We'll see on the, we'll, we'll see on the next... Um... The next clip, whether we have a problem with the, with the clip again. Yeah. Okay. But, well, um, let's see. So that's the mystery guitar. Man. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, your thoughts? What? I like his style. I like I like the way he draws. I, Sean might agree with me. You might not know, but did it not, not remind you of the style of sort of like underground eighties yeah. comic books? You know, the sort of slightly elongated bodies. A sort mm. of it was quite dark in places. And I think the second clip that we've got is a, an example of his sort of more original stuff with. Again, you'll start seeing the YouTubers in the background, but it's more concentrating on, on its own story. So. Okay, well, here's another clip of the Cybertoons channel. Let's check a look. And again, keep your eyes peeled for one or two familiar YouTube faces. I don't know what they do. If only they knew the truth. I gotta feed you cottage cheese once a day. Need to keep it that way because if I don't, you'll kill them all. If they just leave me alone, it's the secret life of a sewer monster and his pal who could kill you, but he doesn't. Cybertoons there, The Secret Life, and indeed uh, Eagle Eye viewers might have spotted an animated version of none other than Shane Dawson. Shane yeah. Dawson. Who I think has probably been the most featured performer on this show. I, I think, think nary a week goes by when Dawson doesn't pop up in some yeah, ways. In conversation. In, if yeah. nothing else, yeah. if nothing else. Indeed, yeah. But I mean, he's popped up in loads of videos. But anyway, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's kind of nice to see animated, but animated versions of YouTube stars. Maybe if he started doing little ventures of these anime, you know, yeah. these characters. Yeah. Start seeing them in situations obviously they can't do in real life. Let's see, you know, Shane Dawson in space or something, you know. Yeah. Or exactly. Or, or I Justine. The well, Adventures of I Justine. That seems to be a, a glaring omission. I have to say, no I Justine, uh, and I'm sure there must be uh, an animated I Justine in the works somewhere. <laughs> Uh, in what form that will take, we but know not. That that last one, The Secret Life, I really like that sort of dark humour. I'd like to see him do more of that, actually. Yeah. And maybe less concentrate on the YouTube stars and start... More of his start, own Start his doing own his comedy. own creations. Because, yeah. you know, that was that was a great animation. Great little story. Yeah. Very dark. Did you like the song? Quite disturbing. Yeah. Um, I did like the song. I think the song... <laughs> Cottage cheese. Uh, yeah. Kind of guaranteed to please. Cottage guaranteed cheese. to please, yeah. But yeah. no, I like, I like the dark humour in that. And he's, 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 he's talented, this guy. And again, he is making a name for himself, um, like we saw Shane Dawson in the video. He actually yeah. has created some bespoke animations for Dawson, and Dawson uses these on his own videos now, doesn't he? He does. So, uh, Shane Dawson does. Little yeah. interstitials. And I think Shane Carl as well, and um, yeah. Mm. I think there's even a um, Philip DeFranco one as well. Oh, really? Well, we'll look out for that. Any uh, Anything to add, Sean? Or Nothing much to add on no. that, but... Uh, um... Yeah, it's, it, I just find it kind of interesting also that this is uh, kind of like the first thing where YouTube itself is becoming introspective. Exactly, yes. exactly. As I said, I pop will eat itself, yeah. Yeah. and maybe the internet will also begin to uh, uh, self-digest. All, all forms of media culture at some point starts eating on itself. And eventually implodes. Yeah. Uh, we will see. And one interesting fact as well, his real name is Jorge Fafan. Uh, I assume that is the correct pronunciation. I've only ever seen it written down. Mm -hmm. But Jorge and Cybertoons, we salute you. YouTube.com slash Cybertoons. Are we going to clink it? Let's have a glass. We are going to clink are back, Cybertoons. They are back. Cheers. Champagne, the three glasses. champagne glasses, the three musketeers. The Cheers. Elazar brought us this from Berlin. Mm -hmm. And something else that Elazar brought us from Berlin as well. Thank you very much for this, Elazar. 
As I said, this guy is on youtube.com slash cybertoons, and this, you will like this. Check this out. We have got some on-screen graphics, guys. Mm -hmm. We will, of course, be tweeting where you can find all of these videos later in the evening. Our video website, thosevideoguys.tv. Check us out on Facebook, slash thosevideoguys. And we are Twitter, at thosevideoguys. Please tweet us. Yep. Sean has got an iPad in front of him. He's got one eye on Twitter as well as one eye on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Elazar, you've got the chat room on you there. So yep. there's no excuse. It's your show as much as ours. Please feel free to comment and chat. And again, even during the week, you can catch us on any of these. Uh, any of these. Please, we encourage you to do so. Tweet us whenever you like. Elazar is a Twitter hound and he loves Twitter. So we are at those video guys. Tweet and retweet us and tell your friends. Guys, that was Cybertoons, our first YouTube channel of the week. Now, as we said, it's an animation special. And what better way... Uh, to celebrate the Bitly's top five. It's not a Bitly's top five it's this week. Bitly's, it's Lego. It is a Lego mm -hmm. top five. Our top five Lego-based animation. Now, when I was a kid, I loved playing with Lego. What kid didn't? It, wasn't it recently voted the number one children's toy that of wasn't all me at time? All. And I would agree with that. I would absolutely agree with that. I would, except for my, my kid's youth was mostly spent with Star Wars action figures. But you know, you have you have all these Star Wars Legos. It's like, yes. If now, only they had that, if I'd had when, that when, when I was a kid, and my, 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 my parents would be bankrupt. And now. coincidentally, number five. It's, None other yes. than, let's check it out on our top five. It is. Here he, let's Star check Wars it out. Lego. Star Wars Legos. Here it is. Number five, Star Wars Legos. Uh, I, I think we can all agree that's a lot better than George Lucas's effort. Well, what, Phantom, Phantom Menace? Menace. Yes. Yep, there'd be little argument it's about more, that. It's certainly more fun, I think, yeah. seeing the Phantom Menace in Lego form. Yes. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's quite amazing how Lego Star Wars has really taken off as a concept. Yeah, there's even, I think, a Lego Star Wars computer game. Oh, it's a huge, huge yeah. fan. There's like yeah. about five or six of them. And now actually, it's very hard to buy them because they're always, it's always, whenever the shop gets it, they just sell out. Yeah. yeah. I must confess, by the way, and uh, maybe I'll lose some geek credibility, but I was never a fan of Star Wars. And in fact, I didn't even see it until I was about 25 years old. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> maybe I let the show I, I, I always remember one friend of mine once coming in when they first came out with the Star Wars Lego and he had bought everything twice. And we were all looking at him and said, why? And he says, one, one for to best. play with and one to keep. Amazing. Yeah, well, it... Uh, and, and I'm sure with a lot of adults that I'm been, sure that is the yes. case. I'm sure that is the case. A lot of... Uh, so who was that? That's uh, Darth Milo 77. And we yeah. will, of course... Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Darth Milo 77. Number four in the top... Four. Oh, I was about to say, he does actually quite a lot of Star Wars Lego based, animation. Yeah. So have a look okay, at his we'll channel. Check out. check out some of his other stuff. Number four, uh, something you might recognise as well. Grease Summer Nights. She swam by me, she got a cramp He ran by me, got my so down I saved the life, she nearly drowned He showed off, splashing around So the sun, something's begun But uh, oh, the sun on the night Tell me more, tell me more. Guys, was it love at first sight? <laughs> of course. I mean, you know, I mean, there's been so many other kind of like Harry Potter, uh, um, Star Wars, who just saw Batman. There's only so many established franchises linked with Lego. So what more fun to see something so original as Grease? Indeed, why not Grease? Mu musical, musical Lego. Yeah. Indeed, one for the ladies perhaps Indeed, as yes. well. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Number three. Let's check this out. What was number three? Oh, that's oh. just say where we... We certainly should do, LSR. Demon Dogs. I apologise for that. YouTube.com slash Demon Dogs. D-O-double-G-Z. Uh, let's check that out. Uh, number three in the Bitleys. My favourite of the week, actually, I think I should say. The Simpsons intro recreated in Lego. Check this out.
Now that is fantastic for me. That's my <laughs> that's my video of the week. Well, you can't go no, wrong with my video. You can't. You really can't. You I'm can't. a huge Simpsons fan. I'm actually very surprised considering how big the Lego franchise is on computer games and how big the Simpsons is. That, that hasn't actually been yeah. combined Indeed. together. I like the way they actually um, they've actually made unique hair for them, especially well. yeah. Marge. Yeah. Big, Blue Lego <laughs> block. Just block, block. It reminds me actually when uh, Simpsons went to was it widescreen or Sky HD or something? Yeah. They made a live action version of the opening. They did. did yeah. Which was, was filmed in the UK. It was. It was yeah. Filmed by British yeah. directors. Well, I think it was a promotional thing at first, and then they yeah. did use it as credits they for did, one of the yeah. episodes. Oh, maybe the one Ricky Gervais uh, was. Uh, it might have been the one with Ricky Gervais. Gervais. But well, of course, yeah. because it was shot in the UK. Marge is driving on the other side of the road than she would be if she was in Springfield. I see, interesting. Mm. So that's one to keep an eye out for. That is the uh, the Simpsons uh, as recreated in Lego. By YouTube.com, Bulk96, B-U-L-C-96 on YouTube. Check out his channel as well. There's some good stuff on there. Uh, number two, again, another actually another one of my favourites as well. Because not only am I a big Lego fan. Do you know what, by the way, we should clear something up before we go any further. Oh, yeah? I, uh... I spoke about Lego to some Americans once. Yes. And they didn't know what I was talking about because they call it Legos. Lego. They, they don't pronounce it. The brand it. is called Lego. Yeah, but they say, well, they, they, know, they knew what I was talking about, but they say, I'm going to play with some Legos. Uh, have you got right. Legos? Did you play with Legos? Do you collect I, Legos? I've never heard that. They never before. call it Lego. I spend a lot of time in LA. But do you talk about Lego? <laughs> Sometimes I do actually. Really? Yes. Oh, Perhaps so the, our American friends in the chat room can clear that up. Do yeah. you think, call it Lego or Lego? I think, They're probably from Texas or something like that. Well, let's see anyway. But I think uh, that you guys say Legos, so uh, let's find out. Number two, anyway, of our Legos top five animations is Dinner, 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 Batman. Wow. have a bus full of children hanging from the top of a skyscraper in West Gotham. A detonator has been given to the mayor of this city that, if pressed, will snap the wire holding the bus on said skyscraper. Now, the mayor is hooked up to a machine I invented that is slowly drilling a hole into the side of his head. If he doesn't use said detonator to kill said children, then a bomb will go up in Gotham City Library. But if the library... What the hell are you talking about? You don't even have any of that stuff. And they call me crazy. <laughs> Let's just kill the guy! <laughs> oh, oh, I don't want to kill him. He's too much fun. Too much fun? Are you delirious? Well, I know you are, but really? <laughs> I have a bus full of children hanging from the top of a skyscraper in West Gotham. A detonator has been given to the mayor of this city that, if pressed, will snap the wire holding the bus on said... Batman in Lego or Lego I, I, I actually thought that out of all the ones I've seen, that was some of the most impressive actual Lego animation was yeah. going on. Yeah. The, the animation was smoothless, uh, was seamless, and not just that, if you noticed, all their their mouth movements was animated well, as yeah, well, yeah, which yeah, you don't actually have well, that, normally. That one was done by a guy called Forest Fire 101, yeah. who's been actually doing Batman Lego animation I know, yeah, since 2007. Mm. Really? So he's had like, he's been basically you know, doing his whole life has uh, oh, come to this. I did actually confuse the Heath Ledger Joker with Ozzy Osbourne when it first <laughs> turned up. But Indeed. No, it was very, it was very good that and uh, some some pretty good humour yeah. in it. Batman, absolutely my favourite show yeah. as a child. In fact, yeah. I reckon I could. Well, I, reckon, this, I probably know an embarrassing too. amount the, the, of... Uh, the joke was it was kind of like the humorous Joker meets yeah, the... Yeah, it's the, the Cesar Romero Absolutely, it's the, yeah. Yeah. Well, the Mark Hamill one. It was, the, it was a, a, a meeting of the two, the two eras, really. Yeah. So a lot of people always say, whatever happened to Luke Skywalker, he became the Joker. Mm. Do they say that? Oh, in the cartoon? No, 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 just no? in real life. People don't know whatever happened to Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill. He became the Joker in the cartoon. Yeah. Oh, the voice of the... I thought because yes. he had a scar okay. across his face. Oh, right, yeah. It doesn't look like he's got a giant <laughs> smile. Yeah, okay, well, there Let's you go. Let's not talk about a scar, that's a bit cruel. Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about 1960s Batman, my absolute, one of my favourite shows of all time. It is a great show, and you know what? And it's one of those shows that cannot be on DVD. It's because huge they, problems releasing on DVD. Because there's no music clearances for it. No, no, not only is there no music clearance, the show was licensed by 20th Century Fox. So 20th Century Fox owned the TV series. And now we're in but the 21st Batman, century. But owned Batman is owned by Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers will not give them the clearance to release it on a, so a DVD. Mm. Very quickly, favourite Catwoman uh, of the three who played it in the 60s, was it Julie Newmar, Lee Merriweather or Eartha Kitt? I'm sorry, I'm always going to go with Anne Hathaway. Mm. I, <laughs> uh, I disagree with that. <laughs> 
Yeah. But no, I, I, I um, Lee Merriweather. Of course. I think. Merriweather or Newmar. From the film. Mm. Well, she I was in the film. She was in the film. She was in Judy several Newmar episodes. was the TV series. TV they were both. The, all three were in the film. TV series. All three were in the TV series. No, the movie. No, yep, the absolutely. movie Catwoman was not in the TV series. All three of them. Were, the I guarantee only it. one of them. Guarantee you. Uh, I know my stuff. SP Wright agrees it's Lee Merriweather as well. Okay. Uh-huh. Brad um, says Julie Newmar. Uh, Tom, Dave, and Tom is agreeing that Lee was in the movie. Yep. She uh, was in the movie and later in the TV series as well. And. A.G. Lijinsky agrees about Mark Hamill always being the Joker now, from now on. Yeah. I see. Well, there you go. And indeed, uh, an interesting, if you're a fan of not just 1960s Batman, but 1960s Adams Family as well, that although Frank Gorshin played the Riddler throughout seasons one to four of the 60s Batman, yeah, in, yeah. in season four, episode one and two, it was played by John Astin, who played well, did, uh, did, Gomez. Did, did you know that when Batman got cancelled, it was a shock cancellation? Nobody thought because it was it was still getting decent ratings. It was, ratings. So it was well, very yeah. expensive to make, and they'd already started on the scripts and the casting for the, new, the new series. Season. Yeah, and they were going to the first story. They were going to introduce Two Face, and do you know who they cast as Two Face? I don't know. Clint Eastwood. No kidding. That would have been amazing. That would have been. But that, amazing. that was before Man with No. He just finished on Rawhide. At and that they point. thought so, and so it was going to be Clint Eastwood, wow. and he'd he'd all signed up, and he'd agreed to do it, and then the show got cancelled. What a different what world! A yeah. what so a in a in a whole different world, Clint Eastwood was a Batman. Unbelievable. Okay. But number one, number one, number in our one. Bit of, I could talk about Batman sixties version <laughs> only all day. Uh, number one in our Bitly's top five Legos animations, the Black Ops. Check it out by Custard Production. about this video Black Ops about it. I haven't yeah. actually played Black Ops yet. you probably have haven't you yeah cool it's, that, uh, that, it's brilliant that, isn't it it's great but that, that was brilliant animation it didn't remind me of Call of Duty at all but, uh, <laughs> it's a bit more like I, Terminator actually yes. isn't it when he goes into the into the police police station he just I kills everyone I love it when somebody takes so, some kind of children's franchise and just does something completely inappropriate with it <laughs> It's it's very and, and and fantastic animation as yeah, well. Yeah, really. That, that and the absolutely Batman. Absolutely seamless. That and the Batman have just perfect animation yeah. to them. And for me, The Simpsons was the uh, the best video of those five. But it's more to do with you know personal preference. So they're all yeah. great. And those were just the top five. There's hundreds or maybe thousands of videos. They are Lego based. But I think Black Ops is technically probably one of the best Lego animations out yeah. there at the moment. Undoubtedly. And but if you've and got it's a, gone hugely viral. But yeah. You know, mm. for obvious reasons. But if this top five has given you a taste for Lego, then uh, do a bit of a YouTube search for it and you will find yeah. many, many videos to your liking. And indeed, we've got Matt in the chat room saying that Black Ops was his favourite video. So uh, there you go. That is by Custom Productions. Check out youtube.com slash Keshen8. We will, of course, tweet that later mm-hmm. in the evening. Check out the bottom of your screen, gang. That's pretty cool. That is Twitter pretty cool. <laughs> at those video guys. Follow us, tweet and retweet us. And uh, we will be happy to return the favour as well, I'm sure. Uh, so keep tweeting us. We've got the chat room as well. Elazar, you've got the chat room open. We do, yes. And, uh, uh, Brad so... says Black Ops was amazing. It certainly was. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Tom says love Black Ops. Oh, well, it's and a favourite. Brad is asking, I think Re- Rebecca asked us had also, is have we seen the Silence of the Lambs in Lego? I haven't. And we haven't. Oh, I, can't no, wait I didn't to. even know that mm. was out there. It certainly didn't come up when I was looking for some of the best ones. Have they ever done Doctor Who in Lego? Mm. I don't know. I'm sure I'm someone, someone would have done. I'm actually surprised you can't actually buy Doctor Who Lego sets like you can with. Uh, you would have thought Star that would be an obvious and, one. Well, yeah. guys, you brought it up. It's the elephant in the room. Uh, Should we bring out we probably our, ought our to, figures uh, for this week? Yeah. Figures for this week. Well, in honour of. Uh... Is Mark Gardner in the house? I think he is. Mark. What we have we, here we, we is got, we got some th- we got some the third something doctor. that uh, uh, we felt that would be familiar with uh, Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart, the Brigadier. Seeing as very sadly Nicholas Courtney passed away today. For those who are huge Doctor Who fans of the classic era, they will obviously know the Brigadier from the 1970s series. 
sadly he passed away today and mm -hmm. so we brought yeah two figures as Sean said from that era in tribute I actually I feel the world is that bit less safer well, the Brigadier watching. Well, you know, now. how do we defend ourselves against aliens without you, with, the, with the, the top manic unit? I know, at, absolutely. At the, at the helm there. So. A dark day for Doctor Who fans, <laughs> but please, uh, as echoing the sentiments of the chat room, rest in peace, and uh, all the best. So what's next, Sean? It is. Well, go ahead, Sean. Why don't oh, you tell us? Okay, what? Well, uh, we we we've got Happy Harry up next. Happy Harry. Okay. I see this guy. I'm really glad we're. Reviewing, I think this guy's stuff is the best stuff on YouTube. Do you? That's, really? That's I a bold claim. I really? Wow. Love okay. It. It's a bold claim. Let's check out a clip and see if the yeah. chat room agrees. Well, Jake, you have finally been accepted into my tribe as a man. And now you are a man, you must choose a woman. Uh, I've already chosen. But first, she has to choose me. She already has. And this is awesome! You know, this entire time I've been doubting whether or not betraying my entire race is really a good idea, but it's finally about to pay off. Pay off with hot blue alien sex! I see you, Nate Terry. And I see you, Jake. I'm ready for you. Don't try and be gentle. Do me! Do me like you do one of your Earth Girls! Oh, you bet! Take your hair and stick it in me! Wait, what? I want to feel your ponytail deep inside me! My ponytail? Wait, wait, can I use my penis instead? Penis? I think we better take that one off there. <laughs> Before it gets um, censored. Yeah. Am I wrong yeah. in saying that that was originally banned by YouTube? Oh, no, no, no. The next one. The next one. The next one. Oh, the yes. next one. Okay, well, should we check out the next one then? Uh, before we move on. In lieu of a sexy time the, video the, this week. Yeah. Bad, this, is, yeah. this is the sexy time video of the week, yes. Yeah, this is... Uh, Starbarians by Harry Partridge. Yeah, check it out. Mission, the Starbarians stop over on the planet of Memoria for agreeing to slay the Beast of Gormax. The Starbarians are treated to one month of alcohol, orgies, and the most succulent meat the galaxy has to offer, for they may never return. Well, <laughs> Elizar, I know you're particularly into that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, the animation? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What did you think I was talking about? Well, Harry Potter, what a... You know, oh. what a great animator. I mean, he's obviously he's, he's appealing to the geek crowd as well. well which I mean, we are part the, the one, of. You know, well, you guys, I mean, there's, there's four of. ones he's done, which are just my favourite ones on the internet. There's uh, the Saturday morning cartoon version of the Watchmen. Absolutely, uh, which is brilliant. There's Akira, if it was done by Americans. Uh, uh, there's his latest one, which is a spoof on uh, somebody watching the latest trailer for the new Elder Scrolls game, which is hysterical. And actually, it's got more hits than the actual trailer for the Elder <laughs> Scrolls got on YouTube. But I think his best one is uh, Nick Cage's I Want Cake Really? Song. What about the Justin Bieber show? I, I like that, but it's just that whole uh, Nick Cage, the way it's edited. I, I already think Nick Cage is such a douche. The, so, actually, I shouldn't say that. I've already had the Shannon Doherty fans attacking me. Yes, on, we did. Uh, we yes. did get hate mail for the Shannon Doherty review of Sweet really? Seven. Really? Yes. Well, I don't think we were ago. that bad on her, actually. But... I think we went easy on her, if anything. But yes. that's, that is a, uh, a, a sensitive subject, because we know that's actually uh, a lady who's very close to Brad Wyman's heart. Mm. Well, indeed. As yes, a, yes. an ex. And very close to my clean ex. Oh, and, mm. Well, Nick Cage might be watching, according to oh, B.W. Hibbs. Uh, but the Justin Bieber show, because I think there's a lot of chat about it. On it's <laughs> Justin Bieber meeting lots of very deformed people. <laughs> it's um, very surreal. The but, uh, uh, Harry Partridge, Harry Partridge yeah. Happy Harry, the Happy channel youtube.com slash Harry Partridge. Uh, you were saying about the uh, the Saturday morning Watchman, which I think is his best video. Yeah. That was fantastic for it's me. If, it's if, if you take take out all the sort of sex and violence out of the Watchman and, what and just made it into this. a little yes. kiddie show where everyone's all very happy, the comedian's very happy. It was exactly the kind of Saturday morning cheap product <laughs> placement filled cartoon that I would watch in every weekend yeah, in the eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And in the intro, they even had like the little keyboard guitar and the, uh, the sort of Josie and the Pussycats. Exactly. Josie and the Pussycats, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly what it was. And um, and uh, Ozymandias was like um, <laughs> Scooby Doo. Yeah. And indeed, it's even got the. Uh, I was just checking him out on the internet, and yep. Dave Gibbons, the artist for the Watchmen series, uh, actually said that he thought it was a great video and really mm -hmm. admired the uh, attention to detail in the video. So it's got. The approval, if not of Alan Moore, then certainly yeah, of the artist. Nothing's artists. ever going to get the approval. Nothing's going to get Alan Moore. Moore's approval. But uh, anyway, oh, Matt, have we got a comment there about uh, 
Shannon Wum, Doherty. Wum, Wum Riders are saying that Shannon Doherty was good in Little House of the Prairie. I thought you were going to say she was good somewhere else. <laughs> Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> and Brad Wyman thinks they should do the Melissa Gilbert show next on Harry Partridge. Might happen. Maybe we could send him some ideas. Who knows? He's a popular and in-demand young artist, and we certainly wish him well. That is a great yeah, channel. That Avatar video. Did you guys? You must have seen the Avatar movie. Yes. yes. What did you make of that? The Avatar movie. Yeah. I, I I I thought it was okay. Yeah. Was I, I'd, okay. I'd rather watch Harry Partridge animation. Harry Partridge did enjoy did Avatar. Justice, yes. Yes. I think that the uh, Avatar is the absolute epitome of a thumbs in the middle movie. Yes. It's just considering all the money that was thrown over. Overhyped. It was so mediocre. I think. Yeah. For me, uh, my best Avatar-related memory is I went to see Avatar at the cinema and I had on my 3D specs mm -hmm. and before the movie started there was an advert for Cocoa Puffs and there was a big bowl and all the Cocoa Puffs were swirling round and round and round and I felt like I was in the middle of this huge bowl of cereal and for me that was the best special effect of the whole three hours I remember that I was when in the they cinema. did Doctor Who in 3Ds. For in comic the 90s. Yes, Doctor Who as well. crossover with EastEnders in 3D. Why won't they release that one, eh? Because it's shit. And, well, we'll talk about this off air because I'm not, I'm not <laughs> confident in my Doctor Who opinions uh, to talk about them on TV. But that is a fantastic or fascinating Doctor Who, much overlooked and forgotten by everyone except us, it seems. So we will talk about that. No, the fans time. actually try desperately to forget, to forget about, about it. it. Yes. But the more you try and forget about something, the harder it is it to is. forget. Mm. And an interesting thing that came up during the Berlin Film Festival was that it was actually the Third Reich who invented 3D filmmaking. Was it? Really? About 30 Why? years before everybody else. Isn't that bizarre? The, the, the They've actually found some lost well, 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 3D films according, made by Hitler in the 1930s. Well, according to uh, Captain America comics... The actual Nazis, actually, and also Sergeant Rock comics, the Nazis invented everything, but they just didn't get in time to use it in the Second World War. They invented atom bombs and dimension rays. Well, we'll see and... what they've invented in, in the Captain America movie coming yeah. out this Well, summer. yeah, indeed. And talking of uh, Nazis and cartoons, I was listening to an interesting documentary this week about uh, the various things that you spot in the background of certain Walt Disney movies. Yes. Um, I'm not saying that Walt Disney is a Nazi, although I think he definitely was a Nazi, wasn't he? But... I don't think uh, you should I, say, I'm sure Disney lawyers, I'm, Disney lawyers... I'm not lawyers saying that he is a Nazi. Uh, I'm saying that he, when he was alive, he might have had uh, right-wing tendencies. Anyway... You, you, know, you do know that there is a comment within literary and Hollywood circles that copyright law is governed by the mouse. Mickey that, Mouse? Yeah, every time Mickey Mouse... Because it used to be 50 years was the statute... That's right, between. Yeah. When a creator died and his creation became copyright free. And it was like six months before uh, Mickey Mouse went out of copyright. Uh, all of Disney's lawyers descended upon Washington and suddenly was extended to 70 years. I bet it And they was, say in yeah. a couple of years time you're going to have Disney's lawyers descend upon Holly on Washington again. And you'll see the copy. So you've got to be careful what you say about Disney because they've got Regardless, more lawyers I have, than everybody. Indeed, I've, I've got, got some information from Dave and Tom. The, the, the 3D Nazi yeah. story was, was actually a hoax. Was it? I see. And it made it into the Hollywood Reporter. Did it really? Wow. Did you ever, Hollywood did Reporter you, uh, should be ashamed of themselves for reporting. Did that, you ever hear about they the hoax be. story that a lot of people believe for a while you might like this? Somebody actually released as if it was true details of how Orson Welles was going to make a Batman movie in the 1940s. Starring himself as Batman. Mm. That I would like to have seen. That would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. Well, Something that isn't hoax. Before we move on, a lot of people believed it. <laughs> before we move on to our last channel of the week, uh, the uh, the thing that isn't a rumor and is genuinely true is in the background of one frame of I think the Rescuers cartoon uh, yeah. by Disney. There is a picture of a topless woman, and if you freeze frame it, uh, you do a search for it on YouTube and freeze frame it. it genuinely, is there. The animator got you, sacked. You, you, you know, but, I am not going to be freeze. For just if I want to see a topless woman, I buy Playboy. Oh, absolutely! Or. I'm not saying. Uh, I'm, I'm saying, you know, for research purposes, <laughs> not to like get any kind of cheap thrill. But there's plenty of pornography on the internet of a much yeah. higher and more enjoyable quality. Not that I know anything about that. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the background of Disney cartoons. That's all I'm trying to say. There were some <laughs> very. Especially when Tim Burton was animating it. There were some very bored and rebellious animators, and you can often see some swear words or slightly uh, suggestive imagery in clouds and the like. Uh, do a search for occult Disney, and you might find some interesting things. Dave, Dave and Tom suggesting it might have been the Shadow rather than Batman. No, no, no. This, this is actually. Uh... Orson Welles did actually do the voice of the Shadow on the radio. Oh, but it was just okay. somebody as a, a spoof, I believe it was the comic creator Mark Miller, 
released all these documents about three or four years ago making out as if Orson Welles was going to make a Batman film and then got stopped from doing it. And it was all revealed to be a hoax. So. I see, much like the Hitler Diaries. I got quite excited when I saw that at first. And Do you, you, you might remember, Alizar, your similar age bracket to myself. The, were the Hitler Diaries supposedly they, discovered in the 80s? Yeah, they were yeah, supposedly they were discovered. Hoaxes Somebody well, was yeah. paid millions for them. They were serialised in the... Uh, Sunday Times, and then it was all discovered to be a hoax. Well, I think we've spent far too much time yeah, <laughs> talking this about... Is, this, uh, is, this is Q&A stuff time, really. It, it is it? Q&A stuff time, but we've still got one more channel to check out before that, yep. and that is by a very talented, surreal artist called Syriac. Uh, we should... Uh, Interesting name to give you, kid. Syriac. Yeah, well, I believe it's his real-life real yep. uh, really? surname, isn't it? It's, it's his surname. Is. But let's check out... The best way to describe it is to just look at a couple of clips of his for a few seconds each. Yeah, I think you get the idea with this one. Let's look at Syriac Cycle. That is a good, the fun first one, I like that, I have to say, I like my, that. My favourite one was about the cows. The cows? The cows one. Yeah. It's a very surreal filmmaker. It's, it's, it is like Terry Gilliam's Monty Python work, but this, like a dark side of it. He is There's the successor for Terry Gilliam. And yeah. If you like Monty Python, Dave and Tom I know is a big fan in, in there. Yeah. This is this is Terry Gilliam, but cranked up a notch as well. Yes. I think. So, yeah. so there's quite a dark side to it, yeah. but and I, I especially love the way he's really got it perfectly timed with this hypnotic music. Um, the music I did like. Yeah. The music I did like. So this, uh, did you see the one with the cows and all these bizarre the cow cows one. nodding their head, turning into and oh. they get all to weird shapes? And I, I had nightmares after watching that. So. I have to say, I know it's sort of art, and I know it's meant to be surreal. For me, it was kind of verging into the glorified screensaver territory after a while. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a bit harsh or not, but it's. Uh, uh, very creative, very visually uh, stunning, very clever. Mm. Not necessarily something I'd want to watch for hours at a time. Well, no, and, and, and the beauty of it is that a lot of his animations, they're actually only like 10 to 30 seconds long. I mean, they're really, like the fun yeah. Well, yeah. I, 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 I love that on YouTube because what I like on YouTube, and I've said this before on the show, is I like it when you're looking at stuff on the internet and you're at work or you're doing whatever on the computer and you can just quickly go on YouTube and you can watch something for 30 seconds and put a smile on your face yeah. or enjoy something. When something's 10 or 15 minutes long, it's like you've got to put the amount of investment, you might as well watch something on TV. I just think, sure, yeah. I always think something on YouTube, you should really be looking at two or three minutes yeah. long. Yeah, so. I mean, the Funfair one is, is perfect. Uh, you can see that being emailed around the office and then yes. emailed to your friends and stuff and that's pretty cool, but... And Maybe all the, the weird finger monster ones. I'm not sure I'd want to show my dad that one. Um, there's a, there's the, the, a British comedian, which Americans were now called Jim Davidson, who's yeah. one, a, sort of a very throwback to an, a very early age of comedians as kind of racist, sexist, Nazi. misogynistic, Nazi, Nazi, Nazi right <laughs> wing humor. Running through this show, I've noticed. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you see him on stage, and he just gets blasted by a laser beam. It's sort of very short 10 second animation. That's an enjoyable you know, video. It's an enjoyable one. Also, um, what's his face from Top Gear. Oh, yes, there's one of him in, 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 Jeremy Clarkson. Clarkson. in, in yeah. a in microwave. microwave. Yeah. I, I, wonder if he, I wonder if he was Welsh or Scottish, <laughs> the animator, because I thought that was a take of when Jeremy Clarkson shoved a map of Wales well, in, in the microwave. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, Syriac so, is actually a British guy and he's yes. actually becoming, I mean, he obviously started, he's made a name for himself doing YouTube videos. But he's since done work for E4, the digital channel, and his yeah. work's been shown on BBC. Yeah, he's yeah. done commercials for Coke Zero. He did a commercial I, for Coke Zero, Coke. yeah. I mean, you don't get I was, much bigger than Coke, I was wondering do you? if that was his work, because there's an animated thing for British Gas at the moment, which reminds me very much of, of his style. style. I think I know the thing you mean, yeah. yeah. I wonder if that's him. Very yeah. similar to his style. Yeah. If not, then he's certainly uh, becoming an influence. Yeah. He certainly is, yeah. So, so that is the YouTube.com slash Syriac. 
Uh, hundreds of or dozens of videos on that. Really crazy. Duchess weird Rebecca's stuff. just had to say goodbye. She's running off. I was. We had a Duchess. We did. Oh, we my did. God. Got some royalty in. Tonight. Well, Duchess Rebecca, uh, we look forward to joining you down the Duchess, rabbit hole very soon. I good hope. night to you. Down the rabbit hole tomorrow night. Mm. We will be uh, checking that Pacific. out on YTV. Yep. On YTV, check it out, Hopefully, Duchess. Thank you for joining us. she's not running because Syriac likes to kill right-wing people on his <laughs> um, in his animations. She did just say earlier that she is she kind has, of, she kind has of right, right wing, wing tendencies, but is not a Nazi. She wanted to be did, uh, yes, very true. clear to make that, that clear. Well, guys, it's our Q&A time. And uh, Ellis, I've got a bit of a question for, yes. for you. Guys, you've got the chat room. If you want to question us as well, be sure to yep, join enough. in. It's to the right of your screen. Um, but Ellis, you were at the Berlin Film Festival. I did, what yep. film? I know you said you only saw one film in the two weeks you were at a film festival. But what was that film? That and was film it good? was the uh, international premiere of the YouTube movie Life in a Day, hmm. produced by Ridley and Tony Scott. I see. And directed by um, Kevin McDonald. The, yeah. uh, How's it really directed? It's just everybody was sending in their own clips. I mean, so it's, really it's, just it's collated quite, and edited together. This is um, an amazing film because, yeah, I mean, for on one day, it was July the 24th, 2010, you ha everyone was asked to make a film about their lives on that one particular day hmm. and send it in and they got four and a half thousand hours of footage from 192 countries and they had to edit that down to like a two hour film and it's quite a remarkable movie it's, it really is it's if you like picking up like a magazine of national geographic about this yeah. sort of just human life that's what the film is and do you think it will get a sort of you know wide distribution do you think it's it has mainstream appeal it's or is to be it too niche actual, yes do you, no. you think it'll go it, uh... it will be in the cinema okay yeah, you will yeah. Maybe so we'll that means for every minute of film they had a thousand minutes no actually two thousand minutes yeah to kind of like pile yeah. through and the shame yeah. is they actually said is that not many videos came from the uk really well i didn't I, yeah, I had time, that yeah. day i didn't myself but that day i was out with some friends and one of our my friends was there with his flip camera Oh, if only he'd send it in. It. Oh, he, he was. He did was. send it in. So you might be in whether, a... whether it oh. got used, I have no idea. I was going to say, you might have popped up in the movie. Otherwise. I might. Yeah. You know, hopefully I'll get some residuals from it. Mm. Okay, we have a question from Dave and Tom. Do we like to watch self-contained episodes or ser or serialised on the web? Or watch the serialised ones? Both. Mm. Well, I think because of what we have to do reviewing them, it's handy if we can sit down and watch a whole series. And as yeah. well, if you're watching something in four-minute chunks, it is hard to come back like a fortnight later and think, well, what was the four minutes that I just saw? So I, yeah. in theory, it's nice to well, watch the four-minute chunks. If you ask me what my two, two different fav my two favourite things to watch on the internet are, um, we reviewed him tonight, one of them's Happy Harry, yeah. and that's, and that's self-contained chunks of animation. But mm. my other favourite thing is The Guild, which yes. is a continuing story. But then again, each episode, it's which always is direct. It's only three or four minutes long, each episode... It tells its story, but then has a cliffhanger which leads on into the... You know, and the girl's just been picked up for a fifth season. By Microsoft? But, by Microsoft, yeah. Yes. Wow, so, so they're going to be wearing Microsoft, Microsoft logos, you think? Well, how sure are we doing it? Just, just, just mugs the down low. With <laughs> but she, Felicia, she's doing... Uh, by the way, uh, money, Del, if you want to just send us some money, the cheque in the post, please. We've she, worked it out now, the on-screen <laughs> graphics. We're she, happy she, to uh, mention she, it. She has a new series of the Guild. They're doing a Guild comic book. Right. And she's now also doing Dragon a Age. YouTube series of Dragon Age. She is like the biggest um, web series star in, yeah. in the world, I think. Which is amazing, really. That someone can really do that. And, and, and I think it's quite inspirational what, to a what, lot of people. What I find interesting, though, is that with this whole Dragon Age thing, and also you've got Mortal Kombat coming on to uh, the internet soon as well, that you're having uh, um, large companies now investing not in advertising but in getting a uh, an internet series to raise awareness of their product. Yes, I, I think it also means that um, producers or writers can start maybe thinking about different sponsors they can actually yeah. go to with their ideas. Well, this was a bone of contention that was sort of raised this week in an article that you sent us, I think. Uh, there's a, a story about YouTube are looking to pay celebrities a lot of money to start up their own channels. Mm. And yes. there's uh, a question of whether or not this will, you know, sort of detrimentally affect yes. the, the self-homegrown I mean, YouTube I don't think it will. I think what will happen is, is if you've got a celebrity being paid to do a YouTube show, that will bring more people in to look at YouTube, and then hopefully they will then look at other stuff that's out there. But don't let's say, let's say if Katie Price has paid lots of yeah. money to have a, a Jordan channel... Her fans are only going to be interested in her channel. But her they? fans wouldn't be interested in the kind of stuff we watch on YouTube 
anyway. Uh, you know, I mean. And then I suppose that then the question mark is, is then if then if all the publicity goes in, because they've invested so much money yeah. in those celebrities, do they then have any impetus to push any of the other channels? Indeed, which mm. they're not. That's one of the things. For. I mean, one of the nice things on YouTube is whenever you go on it, it starts suggesting different videos and stuff. They're only kind of, I would assume now start suggesting the celebrity channels, which they're having to pay a lot of money for and need to recoup their their investment back. Well, it's all in the pipeline at the moment. I guess we will see what happens. It'll yeah. be an interesting situation I hope to. Uh... Price does not get <laughs> Indeed, let's not give her any more ideas. Uh, SP yeah. Wright says we're not just starting to think about different sponsors; we're obsessing about it. So, mm. there's... well, it's because Pete. The, w w one of the sad facts is that you know, doing a show on YouTube or on the internet or whatever can cost people a lot of money and we a lot of the shows we've reviewed when the creators have emailed us about it they said this cost us two thousand dollars to make or ten thousand dollars to make or fifteen thousand dollars when you spent how do you how do you recoup that money and youtube is effectively free the only way you can recoup it is through sponsorship yeah well and of course by selling your own merch i think was it happy harry has got t-shirts yeah. out that you can buy he does, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. have you seen all the ask a ninja merchandise there? yep absolutely there, yes. there's a lot of cool stuff and pop um, culture reference t-shirts are very nice question for me for elazar from aglijansky beyond the youtube project curious if you saw a larger new media presence at berlin this year no i didn't actually really no I, um Hmm. Be a, but maybe the conventional reporters would also be sort of tweeting and linking to. They are, but I, I don't. I don't. You know, film festivals showing projects that are made for the internet are kind of are still niche ones. And I don't yeah. think that the mainstream festivals haven't quite got into that yet. Yeah. Obviously, they are showing short films, and short films sometimes do only get shown on the internet. But they're not yet really plugging into the idea that this content was made directly for the internet. Let's put it on also festival. there's there's I don't mean this in quality as in terms of you know the content but quality as in image quality if something has been certain stuff that is filmed for the internet you can't really show it at a well, film festival this it is might, really interesting you might not you know if it's only filmed well at that kind indeed. of the, you, look on a big, the YouTube, YouTube, movie, screen, the YouTube yeah. movie was shown in a huge cinema yeah. and it was massive um, and the screen was huge mm. and and of course every video is of varying quality because yeah. some of it. Yes, it's shot on a DSLR, but some of it was just shot on some small little like a webcam, yeah, or, webcam something, or something, yeah. and and so it does vary. And there were times I felt quite almost seasick yeah. right, from mm. motion sickness because that little jittery camera, which it looks okay on a on a laptop, suddenly you're up this huge screen. Yeah, I, I actually felt the same way in Cloverfield because it was all mm. shot in that handy cam. Oh, it yeah. was all so shaky. It's sort of get, sort of getting like a motion sickness inside. You know? We've got a couple more questions on there at all. Um, SP Wright asks, how did we guys start doing this show? Well, there's a long and interesting story <laughs> behind that. And it involves a little Hollywood producer we like to call Brad Wyman. Hollywood came a-calling, we answered the door, and... Uh, well, actually, I got a phone call from Elisar, because uh, they were one man, one man short. They were one man down. Oh, and yes. you, I think you texted me as well. But basically, it's a project, a project uh, the brainchild of Brad Wyman, who... I believe is best known for producing the 1995 Pamela Anderson movie Barb Wire. <laughs> oh, that's classic. That, Actually, I, did I see that at the cinema with you, Elisa? We may have gone to the cinema. Yes. Set, yeah. Classic movie. That classic was. Classic movie. Great stuff. Well, we've got just a couple. Pamela more. Anderson, who is now now storming away on British pantomime. She certainly is, actually. Yes. She, that's, uh, she's really making a name for herself in uh, panto, which I don't think Americans really have in the same way we do. But uh, certainly a, a second. A second career building for there. We've got just a couple of minutes left. Any last comments from the chat room? David Tom says safety Ge safety geeks was very expensive and it's been incredibly difficult to monetize. Yeah, well, indeed, uh, you know, YouTube. Some videos are expensive, some cheap. You know, some making money, some not making money. It's a uh, and also it's a brave new frontier. And also it, mentioning that of course celebrities live in their kind of publicity free bubble and yeah. are they going to be interacting? That in the was same one way? of the concerns. Are they really? going to be allowing negative comments? You know, yeah. the same kind of interaction where. You know, you, you do get on YouTube channels. People do put negative comments. Do Absolutely. Comment. And one of the concerns is, you know, I mean, people already 
like Twitter because you sort of get to interact with your favourite celebrities. But no, I'm not it's reading. a very you read trivial... their comments. They're not going to read your comments back. Exactly. You. And you know what will it be like on YouTube? You're being sold sort of the promise of interactivity with a star. Yeah. Will they lose? interest well, in the project the, will they have the time will they have the skill to put these videos together the rock came back on twitter recently do we believe it's even the real rock well actually there are certain celebrities who believe it or not actually pay somebody to do tweets for them. oh i believe that entirely a lot of and them some got, celebrities um, get paid for tweets like kim kardashian yeah. who gets paid ten thousand dollars per tweet really yes. i'd be tweeting like a mother <laughs> if I was on ten thousand dollars a tweet well That'd if you be, follow uh, Lindsay lohan virtually every tweet she makes is an advertisement for some product, yeah. Yeah. and she's being paid to do that. Well, yeah. you know, the same with um, Stephen. Well, she's not getting film work now. Mm -hmm. And the Kardashian family made something like sixty-five million last year. Wow! And now we know That's... why. I mean, we who have... is she? I don't even know who she is. <laughs> she's just she's some American reality TV. Don't you hate? But her I don't know somebody... how she got to be a reality star when it, when who, when who was she in the first place to even get a show? You know. The thing I, very bet, I bet Monica Lewinsky must be hating that her whole scandal happened sort of like in you know, the Monica Lewinsky Facebook. would yeah. have, would have she'd been... She'd have made yeah. such a fortune yeah, now. Indeed, indeed. It was a bit like I was reading an interview with... Who was that girl? Melissa Joan Hart. Clarissa. Clarissa, so who was basically saying that she was the first of those type of girls, but looking at the uh, the Ashley sisters... Yeah, and, the Olsen uh, twins. Uh, the Olsen twins and... Hannah Montana on all that. She said if she was doing it now, she'd be actually have a hundred million. I bet she would. I bet yeah. she would. It's amazing. What it? is she doing now? Did you find out that? Or? I have no idea. Probably on the doll queue somewhere. But uh, I, shame I think I... she has enough money to, to be comfortable. Well, I, I certainly hope so. I wish uh, I wish her the best. I was a big uh, Clarissa fan, genuinely. I'm a David Clarissa Tom, last fan. comment from David Tom. He knows seven people personally who, who are professionally p paid to pretend to be celebrities interacting with Well, indeed. I can do it. Cause if some, you know, I could use some cash at the moment. If somebody wants to employ, if any celebrities out there need me to do their Twitter for them, I'm very, I'm, I make very. You've heard that. We've got a, a, a twit for hire there yes. uh, on Sean there. So I'm a twit for hire. Contact us Twitter at those video guys. Guys, that is all we have got time for this week. Pretty much, we thank you so much for watching us. You can tweet us and retweet us during the week at those video guys. We have got a website, thosevideoguys.tv. Yeah. And tell your friends to come and yes, tell find all us. your friends. We want to see them here next Facebook week. Facebook.com slash thosevideoguys. And of course, our YouTube channel, the address of which is youtube.com slash thosevideoguys. Like TV. TV. Those so check that out. We will break the shop into bite sized chunks and you can watch your favourite bits again and again. From all of us here, Sean, Elizar, John, we have been Those Video Guys. Thank you for watching and good night.